Hi! Good day! Welcome back to our class in chemistry. Today, we're going to open a new chapter and this is on stoichiometry. When we say stoichiometry, this deals with the measurement or determination of a relationship based on the formula of a compound and the balanced chemical reaction. That is why it is important to know how to write correctly the formula of a compound and how to balance a chemical reaction. Thus, the nomenclature of inorganic compounds and how to write the chemical reactions and balance them. To start with the lesson on psychometry, let us discuss the relationship of the formula of the compound and the relationship of the reactants in a chemical reaction. So let's start with the determination of the number of atoms or molecules in the formula of a compound. Number one is the determination of the percent composition of the elements in a compound. In determining the percent composition of the elements in a compound, we have to know what is the atomic mass of each element in the compound and also get the molecular mass of the compound. With this atomic mass of each element of the compound, get the ratio between the atomic mass of the element to that of the molecular mass and express it in terms of percent. For example, we are asked to determine the percent composition of sodium chloride. We know that sodium chloride is composed of the sodium atom and the chlorine atom. Sodium has an atomic mass of 23 grams per mole, while chlorine has an atomic mass of 17 grams per mole, getting a total of 58 grams per mole and this is its molecular mass. Now, if you are going to get the percent composition of sodium, you have to divide the 23, which is the atomic mass of sodium, by 58, which is the molecular mass of sodium chloride. Then, multiply it by 100. So, we have the answer 39.66%. Getting the percent composition of chlorine and sodium chloride, you have to divide 35 by 58, then multiply it by 100. So we get an answer of 60.34%. If you're going to get the total percent composition between chlorine and sodium, there is a total of 100%. What does this mean? The 100% implies that sodium chloride is a pure substance. And secondly, the 100% implies that your answer is correct. Another example is that of the aluminum sulfate. If you are going to look at the aluminum sulfate, there are three atoms composing it. The aluminum, the sulfur, and the oxygen. Now, for aluminum, there is a subscript 2. And for the polyatomic ion, which is the sulfate, it is enclosed in a parenthesis with a subscript of 3. So that, when you are going to compute for the number of atoms in aluminum sulfate, for aluminum, it has to be multiplied by 2. And for sulfur, it has to be multiplied by 3 and oxygen is to be multiplied by 12 because there is already a subscript of 4 of oxygen then multiply it by 3 so it becomes 12. Getting the molecular mass of aluminum sulfate we have aluminum is 27 times 2 will give us 54. For sulfur we have 32 times 3, then the product is 96, 
and for oxygen it is 16 times 12 so the product is 192 in getting the percent composition of each element we have to divide the atomic mass of each element by the molecular mass so for aluminum it is 54 divided by 342 times 100 will give us 15.79 percent for sulfur we have 96 divided by 342 times 100 this will give us 28.07 percent and for oxygen we have 192 divided by 342 times 100 will give us 56.14 percent so the total percent composition for aluminum sulfate is 100 percent another relationship in which we can get that of the formula of a compound is the getting of the number of atoms ions and molecules now we can get the number of atoms ions and molecules by using the Avogadro's number now this Avogadro's number was formulated by Amadeo Avogadro and it has a value of 6.02 times 10 to the positive 23 particles per mole. What does this particle imply? This implies that the particles may be the number of atoms, the number of ions, or the number of molecules. In every mole of a substance, there is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles. Now, for example, if we want to get the number of molecules in one mole of water, so in one mole of water, it follows that there is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Why? Because according to Avogadro, for every mole of a substance, there is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules or particles. Let's have another example. Suppose we are asked to get the number of molecules in 27 grams of water. Now we are given here the number of grams of water. So to get the number of molecules, we have to convert first the number of grams of water into number of moles. So how do we get the number of moles of water out of the given number of grams? We know that the water is composed of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. And getting its molecular mass, there is 18 grams per mole. So there is already the unit grams per mole. Then we will multiply the number of grams of water which is given to be 27 by the reciprocal of this molecular mass of water which is 18 grams of water. So we can cancel out the unit grams. And the prevailing unit now is moles. So multiplying 27 times 1 divided by 18 will give us 1.5 moles of water. With this number of moles of water, which is 1.5, we are going to multiply this by the Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules per mole. So you can cancel out now the unit mole. So what is the prevailing unit? It is already the number of molecules of water. So multiplying the 1.5 moles of water times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water per mole of water equals 9.03 times 10 to the 23 
molecules of water. I would be giving you an exercise after this and kindly solve it and you can pass your output on Friday. So that would be all for today. This is your teacher, Professor Nesita Ruiz of Holy Name University.